This is the Power Break Podcast number 226, titled, The Test of Humility. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Man, live from Studio B, <laughs> we are actually in the same room today, <laughs> people. Right. You may actually notice a difference. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And uh, we, we, I guess we try to fool people because we're, we're at a distance, but we try to make it sound like we're in the studio. And yeah, we've done a pretty good do. job of that because it really is hard to tell when you listen to the, uh, the Power Break podcast. But normally, JT is in, Cal- uh, not California, but North Carolina. No, you'll never catch me in California. No <laughs> offense to the people out there. but North Carolina, and I'm here in uh, Clearwater, Florida. But, you know, today, JT made his way down here to uh, uh, Clearwater, and I'm glad to see you today, JT. Thanks, buddy. Hey, we could do glad video. to be down here. <laughs> it's a little hot. but That's, that's well, right. That's we started right. this. We were in, we're coming up pretty soon, let's see, in March, I believe it is. We'll start our fifth year of podcasting. That's I, it's, honestly that's really hard for me to even wrap my mind I know, around. I know. Yeah. We, we we did it as an experiment, and lo and behold, here it goes, and we're on episode number two hundred twenty six. So we want to thank everybody for listening to the Power Break podcast. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for telling others about the podcast, and of course, thank you for listen uh, or giving us a rating and or a review. Yeah, yeah it's so cool. Like we're. Um, you know, when I first moved up to North Carolina, I don't, I don't normally like advertise that I do a podcast. Like I'll, I'll talk about it. If people are talking about podcasts, but I don't normally, you know, hand out like my card and say, Hey, listen to my podcast kind of thing. And it, now it's to the point to where every once in a while, like I'll be at church and somebody will come up and be, be like, wow, man, I really liked your podcast the other day. And I'm like, Wow, that's really cool. Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, so like it's it, it's it's really nice because the word has spread mm-hmm. to the point to where you know we we get a decent amount of feedback now. So I, I, I can't help but be thankful for that. And that's right. And you know it it's obviously benefiting people or they wouldn't listen to it. So it's pretty awesome, man. And as as you mentioned from time to time, that it is humili not humiliating, but it's it's. <laughs> It's humbling. That's what I'm humbling is the right word. That's the word I'm looking for. Why I've been so humiliated. (laughs) You need to test your humility, but we'll talk about that in a minute. And that's exactly where we're going, JT. Today's podcast is the test of humility. So I know we've kind of ruined it, but how? What? What does that title bring to your mind? You know, it's it's. It's funny. The first thing that pops in my mind is humiliation, which obviously is part of that word, right? Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a form of that word. Um, and we don't associate being humble in any way with being a positive thing nowadays, which that's true. Um, yeah, our society, we just really don't do it. So the first thing that pops in my mind is, you know, when I first started to train as a police officer and we, and you know, you're in there doing defensive tactics and the last thing they're going to teach you is be humble before you throw the handcuffs on the guy or, or the guy swings at you, or, you know, that's not really, hmm. you know, they want you to be overly confident to a certain extent. Now, still still thinking, so you're smart about what you're doing. Um, but they really kind of push and teach, you know, you're the, you're the baddest guy on that block at that particular moment. And the simple truth is, you know, it, we're not ever. <laughs> so there's right. always somebody bigger, there's always somebody better, and there's always somebody willing to do more things than you. Um, so that's the first thing that pops in my mind, but we're going to really focus on how you test yourself in your relationship to God. And that's exactly. really the most important thing. Yeah. Well, as I wrote about, there are many ways to test whether you are really humble or not, but taking a look at our prayer life gives us a real good indicator. Here's a verse, a couple of verses that we're talking about today, kind of the basis of it. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. That's 1 Peter 5, verses 6 and 7. So what we're giving you today is something that I hope that you'll take very seriously because it is a test 
of humility. Yeah, it sure is. Let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to BobRubaker.com, I will always encourage you to get there. Check out all the resources. All of them are priced right. Um, There's no profit involved for Bob or for me. Um, It's just really making things available to you, and hopefully they can help you out. But at the very least, sign up for the blog. Show up shows up every Monday, so you'll be ready for the podcast that week. Um, But let's continue to talk more about your article, The Test of Humility. As I wrote in the article that God has promised His grace, His look, His presence, along with a personal revival of spirit to those who are humble. So how would this blessing of humility look? Um, Peter gives us a ground for testing it, as I mentioned, whether we are humble or not. As he gives in 1 Peter 5, verse 5, he says, Likewise, you who are younger, that is, those who are in subjection to the elders, and that's what he says, to be in subject to the elders, and clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. So in the church, we're to humble ourselves before each other, because he says, God opposes the proud, it gives grace to the humble. And then he mentions those verses. Humble yourself, therefore, into the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time he may exalt you. And you're saying, well, how does that look? And in verse 7 says it, casting all of your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So please notice how Peter begins this section by calling for the younger to submit to the elders, as I mentioned. But notice he comes right down to it and says, we are to humble ourselves before God. That's what he's looking for, that we would humble ourselves before God, because we need help in that area, because technically we were not too humble before God, are we? No, not at all. Yeah. And one of the ways it shows up is our lack of a prayer life. Man, that is a really hard one, that your prayer life actually is an indicator of whether you're humble or not. Yeah, but if you think about it logically, it's very obvious that it is. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because a lack of prayer says, thanks, God, I can handle this. I got this. That's exactly (laughs) right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, So when we don't have time to pray, we're saying, I can handle this, God. I really don't need you. And what we are told in the scriptures that we need him desperately. We are very needy people. That's why it compares us to sheep. That's right. (laughs) We're very needy. And so when we express that to him in our prayers, then it actually is a way of showing ourselves that uh, we need him and we have his ear. Yeah. And we're humbling ourselves before him. Now, a couple of notes on that subject of humility. In Isaiah 66, it says, uh, God says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you would build for me and what is the place of my rest? Well, he says, in all these things my hand is made. So all these things can can be uh, came to be, declares the Lord. But this is the one to whom I will look. He who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word. Wow. That's a mark that God says you get special notice from him when you're humble. Contrite in spirit means you're trying, you realize you can't do it on your own, and so you're just filled with contrition. I can't do this. That's right. right. And yep. so then, um, but the, the final thing he says is that you tremble at his word. Isaiah 57, very similar words in verse 15, where he says, Thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly and revive the heart of the contrite. That's what I mentioned at the beginning of the article that we're talking about that you'll find at BobRubaker.com, that that there's a sense of revival. We have his special look when we're humble. That's right. Um, and, and we have his, his presence, special presence in our lives. So he says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Uh, sometimes we have a hard time humbling ourselves, don't we? <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, because humbleness sometimes is seen as a, and I kind of touched on it a little bit, is sometimes seen a as a sign of weakness, yeah, right? Um, you know, I, I, I loved um, the definition of meekness, which a lot of people will say is directly related to being humble, mm-hmm. right? Um, it is the power under control, mm-hmm. really. And that's really what it is. It's recognizing that God is in control, and whatever power you have has been given to you by him. Mm -hmm. And you control it based on his word and what his word says to do or not do as far as... So you don't abuse it. So you don't abuse it. 
and you recognize always that it's his. That's right. Yeah. It's God working in me and through me. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's hard to be humble. There's, isn't there a country song like that? <laughs> there is. I think yeah. we'll mention that later. Yeah. I think I wanted to see that. All right. So the Apostle Paul was giving exceedingly great revelations, as it says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And twice he mentions, he says, in order to keep me from being conceited, that means in order to keep me humble. That's right. God gave yeah. him a thorn in the flesh for which he prayed three times that God would deliver him. And then three times Jesus mentioned to him, uh, uh, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. Right. That's and right. And he says, he said, most gladly, therefore, I'll, I'll take this. He says, because when I am weak, then I'm, then I'm strong in the Lord. Right. The strength comes from him. So that's the, you know. That could be what's going on, the the cause behind God is getting your attention, maybe a thorn in the flesh, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, whatever it is, a thorn in the flesh to get you calling upon Him, and it also is to help keep you from being conceited or yeah. a lack of humility. Right. But going back then, if, if you aren't praying, you aren't humble because um, you're you, you may not be even seeking to humble yourself before God, but when you pray, when you've been humbled by a thorn in the flesh, what do you do? Start calling upon God, right? That's exactly right. I yeah. need your help. Yeah. I need your help. So God allows those things in our lives. So here's what it's, here's what a, a scripture I, I keep bringing up with people all the time. Psalm 102 verse 17 says, He regards the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Yeah. That is a wonderful promise because yeah, right. when we look at life and we're going through the struggles of life and we're saying, I just don't know what to do. And we're kind of in destitute condition. God yeah. says, that's right. You it's are right where I want you. That's right. Yeah. Where I want you. Right where I want you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. My, my oldest has been going through growing pains, I call them. And yeah. that's really what they are. Let me tell you, you know, middle school is hard. And I think it's harder now because kids have access to so many things they shouldn't have access to on the internet. Um, and he has had a series of times where he got in trouble. Okay. And I surprised him the other day because when I picked him up, I said, um, you know, in all honesty, Christian, I'm very thankful. And he's confused because he's figuring I'm going to drop the hammer, right? which is what he deserves. And I said, God is really seeking after you right now. It's like, you keep doing these things on your own, on your own power, because you think they're cool and you think it's the right thing to do. And ultimately they're wrong. And you kind of know it. You're kind of testing the waters a little bit. And God loves you so much, He's you're getting caught every single oh, time. Oh, good point, Jake. Yeah. What a good dad. Huh? Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. But I, I really looked at it in that respect. And it was funny because he all of a sudden was like, and then I went over all the scripture that talks about how God disciplines the, those that he loves, yeah. right? No discipline, no love. Exactly. And man, the way that he all of a sudden looked at himself as making mistakes, but being loved so much by God that God would be like, yeah, dude, you're not going to get away with that. God probably wouldn't say dude. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> he might or he say, might. I he might say child. Or, child, right. Listen, listen you, you disobedient sheep. <laughs> God probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have called him what I was thinking of calling him. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, I can't believe it, not again. <laughs> but um, That was a good point, though, you brought up. Yeah, it, 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 you have to look at it as, you know, what's God doing here? Mm -hmm. Because we know he's involved in everything. Exactly. So he's trying to do something for you. So he may just be humbling you. I know he was humbling Christian. Yeah. I mean, Christian was like, okay, I'm not as smart as I thought I was. Well, actually, we can take that from every aspect of life because anything that drives us to our knees to pray, we can say, thank you, Lord, because I, if that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't be praying right now. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, even though the Spirit of God, as it says in, in, in Romans chapter 8 and verse 15, the Spirit of God is compelling us, drawing us to pray. Yeah, okay. that's right. And that's good. And he even helps us to pray that we don't even know how to pray as we should. So God has all this help for us to pray, including the Lord Jesus Christ. As he intercedes for us 
Uh, okay, so we have all that going on, but then we don't pray. And so when he turns on things in our lives that make put on the heat that says, boy, I don't like this, I'm going to start praying. <laughs> right. Okay, success, because the Spirit of God has been prompting you to pray, and the Lord Jesus Christ is ready to help you to take your prayer to the Father. Right. And the Father has provided a throne of grace whereby we might find mercy and help in time of need. And he will not despise the prayer to the destitute. So here we go. We have all these promises. We have all these blessings, but we turn from them. And then God says, okay, let's see how that's working out for you. And and we turn back and we learn to pray. So next time you feel like forsaking a prayer time, uh, just think about not only things that you're denying yourself and the blessings from God, but also pride is getting in the way. Oh, it's always, yeah, it always goes back and, to pride. And yeah. it comes back to pride, and pride is something that God hates. Well, check out the article. The article is called, uh, what is the article called now? <laughs> <laughs> it's called The, the test, test of, of Humility, <laughs> my friend. The Test of Your Memory, Bob. Yeah, the I test mean, of your mem- yeah, that's very good. Okay, The Test of Humility. You'll find the article at bobbrewbaker.com. So what else is happening, Bob? What do you want the listeners to know about this week? thought it would be good to talk about God's power line of prayer. I've mentioned the fact that the Holy Spirit is involved in our praying, praying, and the Lord Jesus Christ is involved as our high priest and in interceding for us, and the Father is involved in providing a throne of grace. The Word of God is involved. Well, what I did is write about all the aspects of all the, the, the whole Godhead is involved in our, our time of prayer. Right. And yeah. what a blessing it is. That that's why we have communion with God as we go to God in prayer. And so I, I put together the book called God's Power Line of Prayer. And that's what we're talking about this week. You'll find it at BobBrewBaker.com. And while you're at BobBrewBaker.com, check out the sermon links of the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. It's all at the website called BobBrewBaker.com. This is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT along with Bob Rubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com and we'll get to answering it on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. Um, I say we go into question number one. It yeah. seems logical. That's what we've been doing for four years, almost five. Isn't that something? Yeah, it's crazy. Maybe we should change the format sometimes. I need to humble myself <laughs> and maybe do maybe start off with number two. Or three. Or well, then then we go right into the physical and you and I would never come back. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> we'd get all geeked out on that's it. Right. We, that's right. Yeah. yeah, we do. We should we should think about some format stuff. Yeah. All right. We'll start thinking about something. We'll, we'll think about it, folks. One day you'll tune in the Power Break podcast and JT will be talking in a real high voice. <laughs> Yeah, what is that? Uh, what's the uh, what's it? helium? Yeah, we should do that. We should do an entire podcast in helium. He, with helium. I don't. Nobody know. would listen to any of it. No, yeah. no, I know I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't either. So. All right, I'll just yeah, we'll, we'll stick, stick with, what, we'll, with what works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, all right. So from the spiritual side of life, so why is humility so important? We've already talked a lot about it, but um, man, this is it's so important. But yet we struggle so badly with it, Bob. Yeah, and, and just stop and think about it. God says, says there in First Peter, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. He yeah. opposes. You know, that's why um, I, I gave the illustration when I preached on this subject recently at Christ Community Presbyterian Church that when you think about God opposing something, there's a scripture that we all love when it says in Romans chapter 8 that that for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, whom he did predestinate, he also called, whom he called, he justified, whom he justified, he also glorified. Then he says this, if God is for us, who can be against us? Yeah, that's right. So if God opposes the proud, let's ter- let's take that scripture in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, and just flip it and say, okay, if God, God, is, says, against us. If God is against us, who could be for us? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so that's the condition that when you step before God in pride, that A, you're making things very miserable for yourself because he's opposing you. Yeah. It's like a a person I was talking to recently about the subject of bitterness. And bitterness is, we're told in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, that it's 
that it causes us to miss out on the grace of God. And so it's like a, a plant that we had to dig out the roots all the time. Yeah, you right. You probably had those plants that, it was that uh, Brazilian pepper plant that grows around here. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, you, you think you got Invasive species. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And it just keeps popping back up. And there are other trees that keep, that are like that. You know, I think right. if you have bamboo, <laughs> try to cut that down right and it'll that's come back right. and that's what bitterness is it keeps coming back up in your life and uh, i was telling my friend that uh, so i was talking about bitterness that i was when i preached on that verse in hebrews 12 verse 15 i said that you miss out on the grace of god as if if as if there was a giant fire hose from heaven <laughs> right <laughs> that was full of grace just right. flowing into your life every day and bitterness is like backing up with your truck over that fire hose. And just nipping it out. And what you're getting is just a, a little trickle here and there. Yeah. And you wonder why God is mad at you. Well, God, <laughs> you've closed off what God is doing in your life by bitterness, which is, comes from pride anyway. You yeah, like for it. sure. Okay. Yep. So with that, there's also benefits that we miss out on. We mentioned a couple of them. God says... That this one he looks to, the one who's humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at his word. Okay, so he he looks to you. He has he looks upon you. Okay, or is the the blessing from the uh, the, uh, um, the 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 ironic blessing from the book of Numbers? You know, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord yeah, lift right. up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That, he lifts up his countenance, he's looking to you, okay? Yeah. So he says, when you're humble, when you've been humbled before God, he looks to you. Or in Isaiah chapter 57, he revives your spirit. He lifts you up. Yeah, that's okay? right. Okay? And he revives the heart of the contrite. So that's why he says in First John, do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all those in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. The pride of life. Is yep. not from the Father, but is from the world. So we need to guard against it. Well, that's what we're talking about today. The way you guard against it is be active in your prayer life, humbling yourself before God, yeah, expressing, expressing to him that you desperately need him. Yeah, that's right. I, you know, it, it, it's funny. This probably falls better into the into from the mental aspect. But um, one of the things that became very important for me as being a member of the church was actually recognizing that there are leaders that are put there by God and how important it is for me as a part of the church to humble myself to their leadership. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and I've seen that a lot, when, especially when it comes to um, worship teams, because, you know, everybody wants to, you know, I, I'm guilty of it, too. I, sometimes I think I'm a better guitarist than I really am. You know why? <laughs> because my pride gets away from me a little bit. <laughs> and what inevitably ends up happening is I'll be in the middle of a set and I'll boff something bad enough to where God Everybody will be, looks like, at you. be like, hey, remember, <laughs> you aren't all that good after all. Um, but what ends up happening is, you know, people will start to be like, oh, well, you know, well, we really should do this song or we do this song too much or you know, it'd be better if we had two guitarists or nine guitarists, or maybe we shouldn't have any guitarists at all. Or maybe this guy, you know, the way he mixes, I don't like, and next thing you know, you start hearing all that thing, that stuff. And it's very unhealthy. Yeah. And it's really important for us to recognize we need to be humbled before the leaders of our church and we need to humble ourselves. Uh, like that's why I really love my worship team at the new church. Honestly, like I don't, I, I don't see any of that. What I see is everybody humbles himself to Dave's leadership. And why? And because Dave's the Lord. been put in that position, yeah. and he's there's no question in my mind he's a man of God. No question. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the way he carries himself, and by the way and how humble he is. Mm -hmm. Really, there you go. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, yeah, I was, I was thinking when you said that. Um, I get uh, things all the time about criticism. I, I don't like this in our church. I don't like this. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Come on, people. Let's go. Yeah. I, Sorry, we didn't take a poll. This is a, the leaders <laughs> decide the worship service based on the scriptures. Yeah. You know, we try to follow things. Anyway, uh, 
Yeah. So why is humility so important? Because pride really makes life difficult. Yeah, it sure does. For everybody. For everybody. You, most of all, in all honesty. Um, so, yeah, that leads us to question number two from the mental aspect. There's an old country song there that is, we kind of talked about. Yeah, it says, oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. Hey, that- <laughs> yeah, that's the best you're going to get out of me, folks. So I hope you enjoyed it. Rewind it as many times JT. as you want. <laughs> JT has gone country on us, folks. He's gone country. <laughs> well, yeah, I do live in a very country place. That's true. Well, actually, it's it's more bluegrass, oddly enough, up there. But I guess that's considered country, yes? Uh, well, that's the original country. Oh, that's the original country. Oh. No, you're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, those guys can play guitar in ways I, I don't I can't even fathom. Oh, it's it's so really, cool to watch. Really good, yeah. too. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so... As the song says, why is it so hard to be humble, Bob? We read our own mail or our own press release or whatever. We hear somebody say something good about us. And, of course, in the back of our mind, we're thinking that we're pr- better than we are. Yeah, pretty and, cool. And then when somebody says something about it, then we, it just kind of fans the flame and the way we go. Uh, again, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the Apostle Paul says, to keep me from becoming conceited. Yeah. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh uh, was given to me. He says, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Notice, twice, to yeah. keep me from being conceited. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so it's hard to be humble because we hold on to that. We go to that right away. And that's whenever we say, I don't like that. Whoops, that's our pride. Yeah, that's right. Whenever we get mad at our mate or somebody else, that's our pride. Oh, every time. Yeah, every time. When somebody says something about us and and we and we get mad about it, then that's our pride. So here's the Apostle Paul. He had received great revelations, and he described it from being, you know, before the third heaven. It was probably the time when he was left for dead. Yeah. You know? And uh, <clears throat> many people believe that he saw things that other people have never seen. But he didn't He didn't dwell on that. He said, yeah. to keep me from being conceited, then God has given me this thorn in the flesh. And what he learned through that? Well, that God's grace is sufficient, and his strength is made perfect in weakness. That's the lesson for us when we dip into pride. Yeah. And so that's why he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and verse 12, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. Because you're yeah. in for a fall. Yeah, that's for sure. And throughout scripture, you know, there's warnings of that over and over again there. um, You know, when it talks about how a lot of people will uh, build their own kingdoms here, Mm -hmm. you know, they'll make sure that they have more than enough grain and they have an empire that they basically built. And God says, but your life is going to be asked of you tomorrow. You fool. Yeah. Right. And that's because we really made the wrong thing important. You know, I think about um, many times in my life. um, So so the Apostle Paul, I think if if the Apostle Paul wasn't given a thorn in his side, could you imagine the ego? The man ends up writing a significant portion Mm -hmm. of Scripture. Most of the New Testament. Yeah. Used by God to do that. Yeah. Probably pretty tempting to get a little bit of an ego out of that. Yeah. I think that all the things he suffered, I oh, think he had put him in place. You know? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's hanging out in jail, you know, chained to another person yeah. who wasn't a believer. But he managed to make believers out of probably yeah. most of them, right? He but, shared the gospel with him, and, and that's, yes. So Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, so, you know, if you're if you're out there doing good things, that's the other thing I want you to keep in mind. If you're out there doing good things, guess what's probably going to happen? going to be some trials. There's going to be some tough things that happen to you simply, and it may just be simply to keep your head about you. Keep your head about you and also prepare you to help you minister to others. Yeah, right. Because, you know, God's people are compared to sheep, and sheep need to be led and fed and protected, and that means you need to be where they are. And sometimes you can't minister from top down. You've got to be down where the sheep are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Um all right. 
Let's go into the physical aspect of life. What do you think about yeah, that? I think that's what we do on this. Them program. apples. Those that's what we do on apples. this program, folks. We end up with the physical because we talk about the, the spiritual, the mental, and the physical because we want to get you to the finish line and win and succeed in the race of life. Well, th- that's right. And all of them, oddly enough, are related to each other, yeah. you will find. But this one, man, this makes me laugh. Because, and it only makes me laugh because of my history of people trying to get their steps. Like, I have literally seen my wife walking around the island in our kitchen. Yeah, to get more steps. Because she's like, oh, I'm only like 200 steps away from my goal. And I'm like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. It's so funny. But let's... Yeah, it's a big focus these, it these is days. Really, I mean, it, people it, yeah. for the eye watches and the Fitbits yeah. and everything else. Yeah. You know, they keep track of steps and it's getting people moving. So there's a there's a good there's a of benefit that. to it for there's sure. A good part yep. of it, yeah. Yep. So, what are some realistic ways to increase movement or steps or whatever? Okay, um, in everyday life. Well, I came across the list. I thought it was pretty good. So take a walk every morning. That just goes without saying that, you know, a set walk. Uh, set an alarm to walk at least once an hour, even for a short walk. Oh, I like that one, yeah. You Especially know, if you work in an office. If you work in an office, yep. you know, go for a walk, just a short walk. Uh, walk while you talk on the phone. That seems to be Seem, seems to work well. <laughs> Fortunately, you see people do that. They're walking down the street. They're, and notice how they always put their hand on their hip when they're talking on the phone. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, you know, related to that, I will tell you, I've seen a lot of people hurt themselves texting while walking. Now, that's that not good. That doesn't work out very well. I, I saw a person reading a book while walking, and I think that, that's, that's, that's not going to work that's out not well. Gonna, yeah. Anyway, uh, if you don't have time for a long walk, plan short walks. Uh, always park at a distance from where you're going. <laughs> Sometimes that's a, great that's a good idea. idea anyway. Just avoid getting hit and getting hit. Or it just happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it yeah, just don't, happens. Don't feel bad if you have to park at a distance. Anyway, add steps to your daily routine instead of cutting steps. And that means, you know, if you're going to take, take the long way around things. Right. Okay. That's right. Um, combine your errands by parking centrally and then walking to each place. I had a job one time that I was uh, helping out this, this law firm, and I was, I was called the runner. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the guy that did it before me went to the, all these places that pick up things and drop off things all in downtown Orlando. Okay. Yeah. And so I just parked, when I did it, I just parked at a central place and just, and I ran. I literally ran between all Wow, of them. that's cool. Yeah. And uh, I finished about half the time that the guy did before. And they said, they told me that I was too fast. <laughs> You know, I, I always love when you, hey, you know, you need to slow down. You're doing yeah. this a little too good. Yeah. You're yeah. making us all look I bad. I thought it was a good idea. I anyway, think it's awesome. Uh, another idea is to take a short walk after lunch uh, or any time after you eat. That's actually supposed to be good to keep uh, the carbs away from settling in your fat. Yeah, I uh, yeah. Well, we'll talk about me staying away from carbs later. Okay, so yeah. and then uh, also that it's always good to take the stairs. Find uh, refreshment in outdoor walks on trails. Just to, you know, walk your dog. Do you walk your dog? You know, you don't I did. Have to. I, I I did up until I. She's um. She's a, she's got something going on as far as like cancer, unfortunately. Oh. So, um, her walks are very limited. Okay, okay. not to mention. Walking in my neighborhood in North Carolina, you want to talk about humbling? You're out of gas relatively quick because... Oh, up and down. It's, it's yeah, and it's steep usually. It's, oh, like, it's like 10 degree grades usually. Anyway, a couple other ideas. Just get a walk after dinner. As I mentioned that, it's good for your digestion. Get a quick walk during commercials when you're watching the football game or something. Uh, shop at a farmer's market because you'll it'll mean more walking. And then last one is... Drink lots of water. That'll get you walking. <laughs> <laughs> it will definitely get you walking, that's for sure. Trying to trying to figure out where the bathroom is yeah. is most likely. Yeah. Any other ideas, JT? You know, I, one of the things that I've seen, and I really like it, is uh, the move to get away from desks where you're seated to desks where you're standing. Oh, that's true. And that keeps you actually moving. Mm-hmm. I know um, they started to do that with our dispatchers over at Largo PD before I retired, and I thought it was a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of times people have those uh, retractable desks, you know, it could be up or down. Yeah, that's right. And, and it really does help. So anyway, yep. Well, it takes discipline to add those steps every day, but there is great benefits. So uh, 
Think about it. Take the discipline. Walk a little bit more. Discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life, as we always say. So check out today's show notes at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 226. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRubaker.com and listen for our answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for God's Power Line of Prayer. That's the book we're talking about that you'll find at BobRubaker.com. Click on the on the resources, scroll through the resources to the books, and to the books you'll find it. God's Power Line of Prayer. Check it out today at BobRubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast and check out news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.